What is the significance of uh, 1989? 1989? It has significance in each uh, each field. Public administration. Somebody was public administration, right? 1989, sir. Anything in public administration? Fall of the Berlin Wall, end of Cold War, end of fight between uh, communism and socialism. Start, come again. 1981, that is. That is 91. Balance of payments crisis, 91. PV Nasimara, okay. That is 1991, clear. No, 1989. 1989, fall of the Berlin War. End of the Cold War, end of this fight between communism and uh, socialism, starting of uh, religious fundamentalism. That's the year when Salman Rushdie was issued that uh, fatwa by Turkey for satanic verses. Yes, no, have you heard about this? Greek and Latin. <laughs> uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, China. Hari, these are all like uh, historical events. I'm not talking uh, specific to my uh, uh, domain or anything. This is in the public domain. This is not my subject also. <laughs> yeah, but I'm able to tell. <laughs> 1989 is important, especially in this context, because that is when your worldwide web was invented. Tim Burns Lee came up with your www dot whatever in 1989. And that's why technological adoption model, uh, rather acceptance model is of significance. Because that is the start of your third industrial revolution. I feel I'm talking Arabic or something like that. Huh? Third industrial revolution? Which industrial revolution are we in? Five, huh? Directly? <laughs> Agriculture, industry, technology, Internet of Things? Fourth. Okay. The reason why I, 1989 is important in this context, apart from all what we have just now talked about, is that you had a major invention in terms of your Internet. Okay? So this is what uh, Davis and Bagosi said, people form attitudes and intentions towards trying to learn to use new technology prior to initiating efforts directed at using. Okay, that, what that whole thing means is that we develop an attitude and an intention to use a particular technology even without actually trying it out. That's what it means. So when... Uh, when Apple launched its first iPhone, right? Its first iPhone was a touch phone. Till then, we have not seen touch phones, right? We don't know how a touch phone operates also. We have never used it, but they were still in lines, standing in lines for the new phone, right? They have not used it, but they are still waiting for it. And there is huge lines. Why? Perception. So adoption of a new technology has nothing to do with the technology itself. It has to do only with the perception of the people. Am I getting through? Yeah. So this was a great breakthrough. Because till then we were thinking, you know what, if we increase the features in the phone, if we increase, you know, uh, product related advancements, then people will take it. But this has nothing to do with that. It has to do only with the perception of the people and that's why, which is also called hype, right? Right? So acceptance has very little to do with the technology itself. It says a lot about what we perceive this technology to be. That's why some of the most uh, advanced products have failed. Because they have not been perceived properly or they have not been marketed properly. One of the examples is your Google Glass. Google Glass, actually cutting-edge technology in terms of 
uh, you know, product, it was much before uh, virtual re reality. Whatever virtual reality that you have now, of playing video games and all of that, even before that you have Google Glass. So in terms of technology, it represents the epitome, but failed product. Why? Because it was not perceived right. It was not marketed properly. Yeah? Let's get into the model. So what we are trying to inculcate is actual usage. Actual usage has to do with your behavior, right? Behavior has to do with your inten intention or attitude, yeah? Which is again influenced by perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. Okay. Which is then further influenced by external variables. This is nothing but the structural equation model that we have just now seen. There are a set of latent variables. There are a set of constructs. Yeah? And we are trying to understand why people adopt technology even without using it. These are the reasons why we adopt technology even without using it. Here, external variables could mean social norms, peer group influences, or it is mandated by your organization or institution. Okay, that also has an effect. Right? So this is the TAM model. It adopts two perceptions. That is your perceived use of usefulness, perceived ease of use. Right? Which is nothing but your exogenous or endogenous? Exogenous. Exogenous constructs. Right? Because why are they exogenous? Because arrows are going away. Yeah? Of course, it has also limitations. We assume that people are rational. Right? People think. But not all of us think. Some of us don't need to think. We either take it or we don't take it based on uh, even non-rational criteria. Which is there in every one of us. There is nothing um, um, you know, shameful about it. We all have... Uh, subjective criteria based on which we make decisions. I will wear my right sock first, then left sock. Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah, that's what he used to do, right? Okay, that much we don't know. <laughs> again, not my area, sir. <laughs> Come again? Steve Waugh. Steve Waugh. I think he had a red, uh, red handkerchief. Yeah, these are all subjective criteria and all highly successful people. So it has nothing to do with uh, uh, your level of intelligence or anything like that. Okay? So the limitation is that people, it assumes that people are rational and it does not give us a design advice. Anyway, fine. That is regarding the model itself. But my whole intention of bringing up the TAM model is for you to understand the use of structural equation modeling. Okay? So based on this, marketing programs are designed based on these criteria. Okay? So that's why your Oppo phone is marketed on camera. They are not talking about the other features. They are only talking about camera. Does that mean other, other uh, phones do, does not have a camera? They have. But they are trying to build a perception. They are trying to build a perception that their camera is better. If you want to take selfies, if you want to take photos, Oppo is the phone. So they are trying to build a perception. Till, till that time, you were, we were looking at companies trying to, you know, um, come up with great, greater features in the phone. More product features, more pixels, more RAM capacity. We were trying to increase the product features. After the time model, what we've understood, it's not, it has nothing to do with the technology. It has to do only with the perception. Right? So, when I, the moment I say Apple iPhone, you think of sophisticated technology. Does it actually mean it has sophisticated technology? It doesn't have to mean. But you already have a perception. And that is what is driving you to buy the phone. Right? So based on this model is what marketing campaigns have been designed. The same way if you want to you know, go into your fields of research, try to find out causal relationships, because this is a form of applied research. Right? You're trying to solve problems. Yeah? 
structural equation modeling is one such tool. Yeah? Again, uh, I'm not the brand ambassador of structural equation modeling. They're not paying me for promoting this. But what I'm trying to say is that this is something that you can use in your research. And this is an extension of regression. Anything so far? Those are indicators. Those questions are, yeah. Yeah, those are all indicators. See, those constructs have been built based on indicators. If I start taking the indicators, this slide, slide won't be enough. OK, any questions from your side? Points of dis disagreement, points of discussion? So far, you're able to understand whatever we've discussed. We've got some con conceptual clarity. Yeah. Can I close for the day? Yeah? All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.